especially my man right here. Happy Father's Day to my father and all of the fathers. Yes. And God Almighty who sent Jesus. Happy Father's Day to him. Amen. Amen. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we want to honor you and praise you this morning. Again, thank you so much again, God. Thank you, Father, for sending your son Jesus to us. That we have a better and more productive life. We honor you, Father, for it. We worship you and we glorify your name. Thou will be done this day. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to say, I love you. Today's Father's Day, and I want to honor my father and my and my father-in-law this morning. But if you heard that song, it's a place called Heaven. I want to show a picture of my father and my uh, father-in-law this morning. But uh, uh, when, if you heard the song, it's a place called Heaven. You know, he's, and then it says, "I'm going to a place called Heaven. I won't be here to see you again." I just want to say I love you, I love you. Don't weep, don't cry for me mm-hmm. anymore. Where mm-hmm. I'm going is a better place. Your mother is waiting for me. It's a place called heaven. Yeah. I can remember yeah. that song. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. so, so, so. Yeah. In the year of 2007, I woke up and I grabbed my, back then, you know, we didn't have those smartphones, so I grabbed my little recorder. And I heard this song, and I just started singing it on the recorder. Mm-hmm. And I had tears coming down my eyes, and, and I heard the word of the Lord say, he said, your father's not going to be here much longer. I want you to spend time with him. And then I'm crying, you know, and then he said, I want you to sing this song at his funeral. And, oh, I, did, I really just started crying then. Well, you know, it was 2007, and I'm thinking, oh, it's going to happen this month sometime. <clears throat> it was five years. <laughs> but I thank God he prepared me for that, you know, gave me time to prepare for it. In, in that yeah. time, you know, it, he just prepared me for it. It, mm-hmm. it gave me confidence. You know, he said, I'm going to a place called heaven. Your mother's waiting for me. It gave me confidence in knowing, oh, he's going to a better place. Right. He's just transitioning. Thanks. So, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, it was five years later. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he died, listen, he died April the 17th, 2012, mm-hmm. and one day for mm-hmm. my birthday. Mm-hmm. My birthday is April the 18th. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, I, I thank God. That, he, that my heavenly father, I'm talking about God, thought enough to give me a song mm-hmm. to sing for my father and to mm-hmm. give me that assurance. You know, if today everybody say, oh, we <laughs> see in heaven, they don't know, you don't know if to save or not. They could be drunk, addicts, whatever. And they could, they, you know, they could see God last time on the, you know, on the deathbed. But God gave me the song about my father and it, it just gave me that assurance and about my mother. And it's like, it took the grief. I thought, yeah. oh, I'm just, yeah. they just gone to a better place. That's right. And one day I'm going to be with them. That's good. Anyway. <laughs> that is an awesome thing because I looked at that back in March. I mean, March the 30th of yeah. 2007. Is he gave her that song. Yeah. It was so sensitive. It was so touchy. It was. But you know, God is a God of order. Five years to prepare. Five years. Ago, and everything was just, and you know, it worked out great. Because it was anointed. It was God. And God not coming trying to hurt us. Yeah, that's true. He's not trying to that's bring true. grief. He that's come true. to heal, to, to set <coughs> us free and deliver us. And it was so wonderful. That's how I know it's God. Because it was free. It freed them. And, it just, and on that day, it was. It was just like a home going. Yeah. It wasn't like, a, oh, you'll never see him again. No, no, we will see him again. We yeah, will see him again. Right. Those that are righteous in God, though, that's we will right. see him again. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to read this morning out of the First John chapter 3, verse 1, easy read version. My topic today is the Father's love. It says, the Father has loved us so much 
-hmm. This shows us how much he loved us. Mm -hmm. We are called children of God, and we are really, we really are his children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the people in the world don't understand that. That's right. We are God's mm -hmm. children because they have not known him. So the world doesn't understand mm -hmm. sometimes that mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. fatherly love that we have. They don't. They don't understand. No. I was. I was looking at a show uh, uh, on the Joni Lamb show one day, and uh, there was a woman that was on to giving her testimony, and, and the topic was, is God speaking to, to me? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was so interesting. She, uh, she had three kids, three daughters, you know, and the middle daughter had a project, mm -hmm. a project about, a, you know, another country. Mm -hmm. And so the country she had was Liberia. So... They, you know, we started doing a little study. You know, and so the mother found out that the, it was a choir from Liberia. It was a, a, group, a group of boys from Liberia was coming over to America to sing. So she thought, I think I'll take my daughter to see that. So they went. Oh, she said she sat there. And when she sat down, she heard the Lord say, two of those kids are yours. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. you know, she thought, oh, that ain't God. That's not God speaking to me. But later on, she found out that the the the, the kids that were singing that they they were orphans. They you know they mm -hmm. their parents had been killed, mm -hmm. all of them. And then later on, she found out too. She said that while they were here in America singing, that someone had had blown up their home, the orphan home. Mm -hmm. They didn't have. They, in other words, they had mm -hmm. no home to go back to. <coughs> so she said, now she's still hearing in her spirit, two of those kids are your, yours. Now she already got three. <laughs> And she said, she thought, okay, you know, I could just walk out the back door and just mm -hmm. not listen to the voice of God. But she had prayed mm -hmm. that whole year, her and her husband had prayed. One of the things they were going to do, they wanted God. They wanted to hear God's voice. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and when they hear God's voice, that they would obey. Mm -hmm. So she thought, okay, no, I'm going up front. So she yeah. went up front, right. mm -hmm. and two of the little boys come running to her, wrapped their, finger, wrapped their hands around, around her leg, and said, Mama. <laughs> she knew that that was a sign from God, you know. And I was talking mm -hmm. to God, and I said, "Oh God, awesome. Awesome. I don't know if I could do that." You know, that's mm -hmm. sort of heavy. And, oh mm -hmm. gosh, and I had a little, I had a little relationship with the Lord that morning. He said, "Your father mm -hmm. did." He's mm -hmm. talking about my father. He said, "Your father did," mm -hmm. and I thought, "Huh?" And I thought, "Oh, I look back, you know, my father did." Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm the baby of six siblings, mm -hmm. you know, my natural mm -hmm. biological father, my mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. But when I was five, my father took him five more, four more boys. And I just heard the Lord say, that's the Father's love. Yeah, that's right. That's the that's Father's good. love. Mm -hmm. You know, today I don't think too many people want to do mm -hmm. that. I had to mm -hmm. check myself, Lord, would mm -hmm. I do that, you know? This woman, mm -hmm. she only had three kids. Mm -hmm. yeah, but anyway. But, you know, <laughs> you know, I look at that, and you, you, you look at it in your natural man, you say, I don't know if I can do that or not. My natural man say, yeah. I, I don't know that. But God is God. That's right. And there have been things that I've said to my wife, I don't know if I don't <laughs> want to. Now, natural man must say, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Yeah. But God, when you stretch out and release your faith and to obey him, yeah. he'll give you the grace. That's right. There are many, many, many times that I've done things that my natural man say, yeah. I don't know, I don't want to do that. But then I learn how God works. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Lord, is this you? That's right. All right, I'm going, he said if we draw nigh unto him, he will draw nigh unto us. So that when I stretch out and I go do that thing where my natural man didn't want to do, all of a sudden it's like it just started flowing. I said, man, this is God. This is God. And you want to. That's right. There's a want to in it. That's so true. I believe that the, uh, when I was in the school system and uh, transportation and I was driving for uh, many kids, there were many homes uh, over through that I would – uh, encounter through Gifford County. Many homes there will be kids, and you're talking about most of them with two. There will be two children that most of them seem to come from uh, overseas, somewhere around Africa or wherever it may be. And uh, they had adopted children, and they were raising those two children. Yeah. You know, and God got people all That's over right. the nation, That's right. all over America that is uh, obeying him, that That's he's right. talking to. That's and right. you say, well, right. does God talk to you? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Stop and listen to him. Now, the, I believe that a lot of people, the, the problem is, is they're fearful of what they're protecting. You remember that God says that he that saved his life will lose it? Yeah. And he that loses life for God's sake will find it. 
You'll find it. If you lose, in other words, Lord, I come to do your will, not mine. And I'm telling you, he'll give you the peace. He'll give you the yeah. joy. Yeah. There'll be some things that you ain't, your natural man just ain't going to want to do, ain't going to want to go. But when you do it God's way, it is best. You got peace. You, you're in the best place to, to be, wherever yeah. he send you, wherever he tell you to go. It ain't going to be no better. That's right. <laughs> you, That's it'll be right. confidence, man, That's the joy. Right. And the, it is worth it. Don't be moved by what you feel and see. Be moved by what the word of God yeah. say. That's yeah. faith. That'll please him. That's right. Word. You know, mm -hmm. it's, when we obey God, it's, <clears throat> it's a reward. And I heard the Lord say, he said, your father and mother will receive great awards in heaven. That's awesome. And it was yes. so touchy as he was talking yes. to me. But, yes. but me seeing mm -hmm. my father's mm -hmm. love, you know, I, my brothers, they just like brothers to me. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I'm needed to them, mm -hmm. but in a way, and uh, we we are, we are a family now. Mm -hmm. But you know, I just thank God that He loves us so much. Seeing seeing how my father loved us, you know, He disciplined us. You know, mm -hmm. gotta discipline you. You know, yeah. there was times. I did some things I didn't want to do, you know. <laughs> Sometimes we had to stay out of school to do the balcony. I, I remember one time James came and picked me up, and he said, well, he just called and said, I want to take you to the Jackson Fire Show. <laughs> a long time ago. A long time ago. A long, long time ago. And I asked Dad, he said no. <laughs> Fifty years ago. He said no. <laughs> but but my point of it is, he, you know, you, being a parent, you have to discipline your kids. And just like I have the father. He has to discipline us sometimes. Right. Sometimes we think, oh, right. why, why yeah. am I going through that? But it's, it's for, to better your life. I think back right. what my father did for me. Right. It bettered my life looking back today. I mean, who, who mm -hmm. wants to work in the back? But I thank God he taught me how to work. Mm -hmm. When I saw how my father, you know, did what he did, his love, it showed me how my Heavenly Father loves me. Right. And I heard my son say the same thing. He was saying that mm -hmm. having a father, you know, and parents, you know, it showed him his how God loved up, loved him. So you know, uh, I like to honor my father-in-law too because thank him for raising my husband right here. Yeah, in <laughs> yeah, a way, yeah. you know. Uh -huh. But I thank God has how he is. You know, ha I just thank God for you for your faithfulness, and I, I live with you, and I see that you, <laughs> you know, you love God, and, and it's not fake. And uh, I thank God how you was a father to our son. You know putting food on the table and everything. Uh, I just thank you. Thank you for that. I mean, there was times, whoa, my goodness, you know, he, James is so creative. I mean, he took a beat up old car, somebody's, somebody's junk. And my son was time him to start driving. He took this car, fixed it up. And all his friends wanted a car like that too. But and we just paid just a little bit of money for it. But see, that's the father's love. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, God. But you know, it is not I, he that live within us. Yeah. He that lives within us. You know, if you got a will, you got a desire, you can do mostly anything you want to do. If you just get a desire and a will, you know. If you don't have it, ask God. Lord, give me that desire. Give me a mind. You know, I want to please you. So that's even why the song that God gave my wife is like, I need your wisdom, Lord, in my everyday life. Yeah. You know, I need your wisdom in my everyday life. And that is so true. <coughs> in Proverbs 4, uh, chapter, he said, wisdom is the principal thing. That's the first thing. you got to have God's wisdom. Yeah. If not, you on your own, it'd be tough. It's hard out there, y'all. It's hard. But the wisdom of God, he'll make it so. He'll direct you. Stop. Take the time to listen to the Father. He yeah. loves you. Yeah. And he wants the best for you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, but you know... <coughs> Today we live in a society that there's so many hurting. I see all. I see so many hurting kids, and not only kids. They've grown up to be mature adults, and they're still hurting inside. Mm -hmm. Maybe they didn't. I mean, they had to have a father because they were born, mm -hmm. but they don't. Maybe they don't know their father. Or maybe the father mm -hmm. just abandoned them. And yeah. and you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hear the Lord say, you know, if if just one minute you. I'm going to call them, I hear the Lord, deadbeat fathers. <laughs> just drag them down the road for just one minute. <laughs> just just one drag minute. Them down not, the road. Just one minute. Just Somebody said, oh, that's so cruel, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, it's a little cruel. <laughs> and they might get a little hurt, bruised up. But what about the hurt and pain that they've caused those kids, yeah. those children, all their life? All their life. That's right. Hurts and pains. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, 
one minute drove down the road. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, but <laughs> anyway. Sorry. Mm. But thank God <clears throat> for our Heavenly Father. Right. That he he knew that we would be some would be fatherless. He knew, and that's why he went to the cross. That's why he buried the pain he went through, mm -hmm. so that we mm -hmm. might be called that's right. children of God. You know that we, even if mm -hmm. you don't have a father, <coughs> you know, that you know who you, who your father is, or maybe he's abandoned you. Mm -hmm. You can always mm -hmm. go to the heavenly father. That's right. That's why he went to the cross. He said, you know. That's what that's what he did it for, you know. Mm -hmm. He 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 said, "I come for the brokenhearted, the ones that have been abused and uh, downtrodden." Mm -hmm. That's why he come, that he can be a father to you. Mm -hmm. And I know, it, I see so many. It hurts me to see so many hurting people that's that's been abandoned by their father, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, raised by one parent, the mother most of the time. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, you look at it and you find that. Uh, you like the ratio the when you see a person that are hurting and you check their background you find out probably their father didn't treat them as well or didn't yeah. raise them or something yeah. somewhere down the line yeah. something happened but you know and you may have messed up but it's not too late because that's what Jesus came that's for. That's why. That's why Jesus came. He came to fix it. Yeah. And he will treat yeah. you as if you never did in never sinned. He will That's treat right. you that when you come to him, you don't cover it, don't hide it, don't lie about it. Many, many guys come up, yeah, man, I, I, I you all oh, watch out. There's a lie You're coming out. But, but just be honest and admit, say, I messed up, I've sinned, I've done wrong, I didn't raise my child like I should have, or blah, 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 whatever it is, okay? And then you repent it before. That's all God wants. You admit it. He can fix that thing, and he will treat you as if you never, as if you raised that child. <laughs> He'll fix it. You know, there's some things that, that, that happen. Maybe you can't get that back, what's done in it. But God, that love that's in him, when he's whom the sun set free, is free indeed. Amen. Amen. Praise free God. Indeed. Well, listen to this. Luke, Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19, out of the Easy Read Version. This is why Jesus came. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the day you're hurting, you don't know who your father is, and you just don't, you just mm -hmm. feel like giving up and, Mm -hmm. You know, you feel hopeless. But listen to what Jesus, Jesus said in Luke 4, 18 and 19. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Mm -hmm. He has chosen me to tell the good news to the poor. He sent me to tell the prisoners that they are free mm -hmm. and to tell the blind that they can see again. Right. He sent me to free those who have been treated badly. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Those who have been treated badly. How you been treated badly today? Maybe you feel like you look around mm -hmm. and... Look like nobody care about you. Look like nobody loves you. But yeah. this is why Jesus yeah. came, and to announce that the time has come for the mm -hmm. Lord to show His kindness. Wow! I like that last part. Mm -hmm. And to announce that the time has come for the mm -hmm. Lord to show His kindness. That's good. You still have a heavenly Father, and He will mm -hmm. show you kindness. Mm -hmm. Just spend some time with Him. Just te listen. Pull your heart out. Tell Him how you feel. If you hate mm -hmm. your daddy, tell Him. Tell Him. He understand. Mm -hmm. And then He'll give you that love. He'll, he'll, he'll just feed you with supernatural love, and, you, and he will begin to change you inside. Mm -hmm. And all mm -hmm. that brokenness and all that hurt and pain, he'll begin to just take it away from you. Mm -hmm. There's an old saying that's saying that hurting people hurt yeah. people. Yeah. I believe there's a lot of truth in it, and I haven't found that in Scripture directly, okay? <clears throat> but I find that to be really true in a lot of cases, hurting people will end up hurting people. If you don't come to the Word of God to let him heal that, you'll find yourself being cross, you know, yeah, grumpy yeah. or whatever, you know, and then you, it's like, uh, sometimes I can make it a little irritable. My wife would tell me, you, oh, you need to pray or, or you need some rest. <laughs> she said, you need to rest. You're you a lady, he away needs to, to rest. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find yourself hurting people, maybe on the world, by snapping at them. Hurt their feelings or something. Being, I mean, you know, just on that, that's a little light level. But some, sometimes you can hurt them, get really, <laughs> really deep, bad, and hurt them. You know, but, <clears throat> and we don't want that. We don't want to hurt nobody. You know, we, because uh, we love God and God living in us. We want, we want to show love to people. We want, I want the best for my wife. Yeah. I want the best for her. Now, if something, if, if I find myself all the time wanting to hurt her, mm, have you been born again? <laughs> <clears throat> Check your life out. Something's wrong because the Bible says in 1 John, God is love. 
And in him is no darkness at all. Now, God is love. That's who he is. And he living within us. And we are living in him. You're going to have love in you. It'll be, it'll be a supernatural, you know. Give it time to develop. Give it time to grow. But, but it's God. And that love will grow. And all of a sudden, you find yourself with, I don't want to treat them like that. Why am I treating them like that? Why should I be bad? Something, something is wrong. Maybe you need to go back and examine, Lord, okay. Uh, maybe I'm out of your wheel here. And then now I've done some things I said I should not have. I'm, I'm repenting for you. Repenting to you and asking you to mercy. And he says, I'll forgive you. That's what he said in first John. I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's what he said. That power is in God's hand. He would do his part if we do his, yes. our part. He's already paid that price for us. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. But guess what he says in 2 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 to 18, out of the easy read version. He, mm -hmm. says, he says, so come away from those people and, and separate yourself from them, yeah. says the Lord. Yeah. Don't touch anything that is not clean, that's and good. I will accept good. you. And guess what he said? <clears throat> you say, I'm father's ability. This is what, this is what the father says. I will be your father. That's good. Mm -hmm. I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord of all power. He's telling you, you may oh, feel like you don't have a father, but listen, he'll be your father. That's right. He'll be there for you. That's right. He'll be there to love on you. Mm -hmm. You know, the world don't understand. They don't understand mm -hmm. this kind of love. But yeah. guys, they yeah. don't. They don't understand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, people think that a lot of people, Satan will, will present it like there is no hope. That's why many people will go and commit suicide. Yeah. They really think it's no hope. That's, that's, that's not from the Father. That's from Satan. He's the father of all lies. You know? So we have to take the authority, and God has given us the power to bind him, to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all of the power of the enemy. And God says, by no means shall he do you any harm. This is the power that God has given me and you. Father God yeah. has given us that authority and that power to bind the enemy, put him in his place, get under my feet, say, and I do that quite often, say, you get under my feet. Why? Because God said we can do that. And that's where Satan belongs, under your feet, not in your household. If you bring strife in your household, then Satan is, he ruling and reigning. You don't even know it. He just having a field day, like, I ain't going to let him know. I ain't speaking to him. That strife just, Satan, he got him. He got him. He's victorious in there, but no, no, no. God said, I have given you, as a Christian, the power to tread upon him. So you put him down, and when that strife want to rise up, anything that, that, that's not pleasing before the Father want to rise up, you speak to it, and you tell it. If you don't talk to the mountain, the mountain will talk to you, all right? <laughs> so you tell him, no, not here, Satan. I take the authority of you, and I bind you in the name of Jesus. You get under my feet. And after he get on your feet, then you tell him, now get out of here in the That's name right. of Jesus. That's right. Guess what? He, he got to go because you come in the name of Jesus. Now, you got to believe it. You got to trust him. You say, but I didn't feel it. We walk by faith, not by feelings. Amen? Not by <laughs> sight. Praise God. You know, maybe today you are a father today, and maybe it's overbearing to you. You don't know. You're like, I don't know if I can do this. Ask the Lord. He'll show you how to be a father. Mm -hmm. He'll show you how to love your kids. He's the father to you. Just ask him. That's all, that's all he wants you to do anyway. Just ask that's right, him. That's right. Just ask him to show you how to be a father. Don't try to do it on your that's own. That's good. That's good. Listen, and don't that's listen good. to all your buddies telling you what to do. <laughs> My goodness, mm -hmm. they have you doing all kind of crazy stuff. I'm telling you. But anyway, ask the father. <laughs> Lord, show me how to be a father. That's right. Show me how. I want to be a good father to my, to my kids, to my children. Show me, Lord. That's good. That's good. Remember, he said in his word, you have not because you ask not. So that's what she was saying. Show me, God. Help me. And expect him to show you. Expect it, okay? That's he right. will show you. He will. You. If you don't expect it, you can't, you know, well, I didn't come to God and I didn't pray and ask him for something. And you get up and then start wearing. What happened? You didn't trust him. Okay? So when you go there in prayer, leave it there. Right there, leave it there. Believe you receive when you pray. I believe that I receive this God when I pray. That's and then God said, and you'll have it. <clears throat> Not going praying, and then when you get up and you're taking that, that pressure back yeah. on you. I just don't know what I'm going to do about this bill. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Well, didn't you just pray and ask God, yeah. Lord, I'm yeah. going to give it to you? Okay, well, then go back and give it to him. No. 
Tell Satan, I've given that to God. I bind you in the name of Jesus, all right? <laughs> God is a good father. He's a good father. It don't get no better than that. Trust him. Find out in his word. Find out by, uh, by feeding and feasting on his word. Reading it, hearing, listen to his word. And receive what that what you hear in the word of God. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. And you'll find out that, man, this thing is good. It is good. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You Amen. know, when I look, when I look at the world <clears throat> and I look at our race, black race, there's, there's so many kids where the mother's raising the child yeah. by herself. Mm -hmm. And it's time for time for the men to come on, <laughs> be a man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. set the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Talk to the Lord. <laughs> and Lord, I want I want to be a father. That's and it's, right. it's you know it's I look and it's like it's just, it just, it just hurts me to see the the children hurting from pain. Like I said, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'll drag it down for a roof for a few minutes to see how it hurts, but. <laughs> <laughs> they hurt all their life. It's just temporary hurt, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, just temporary. Spank them real good. That's just right. Storm up real nicely. I was like, oh, whoops, whoops. <laughs> oh, like, uh, no, I love uh, you. Now, Lord, forgive me. Uh, me. <laughs> I just said you just know, a little we, bit. We'll, we'll look at it. We'll we, we laugh about that, but you know, I'm telling you, it is. We, that's nothing compared to those children that have been hurt all their life. Know nothing about it. Know nothing about it. We. Our heart was touched on someone uh, just yesterday that's in more like an orphanage place. And this it's thing that it, it touched my heart. And I said, man, and then they need love. God says they need love. That's what they need, you know. See, I don't know that way because I, I had my father. Had father. He was there for me. And I said, Lord, thank you. And I say to my father, happy Father Day. <clears throat> yeah. My natural father, thank you. Happy Father, thank you for those times when you told me not to do this and not to do that, That's and my right. flesh didn't like it. But And I said, well, Lord, wh why, why? He said, I do it because I love you. So you may not get everything and do everything you want, but he said, I do it to discipline you because I love you. That's right. You don't see it now, but down the road, you look back and say, now yeah, I see, see. why. That's right. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. So praise God. Yeah. Amen. All right. It's Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Hope you enjoy the day. Yes, yes. Enjoy the day. And don't forget to tell your father, I love you. I don't care if things maybe didn't work out like you thought, or maybe you feel like you wasn't treated like you uh, should have been by your father. But if you can just, those kind words just say, That's right. Father, I just want to tell you, Happy Father's Day, and thank you yeah. for what you have done for me. You know, I mean, Somewhere down life, I mean, that surely is some good somewhere. Either. That's right. I That's mean, right. you were born, ain't you? That's you alive, right. ain't you? That's right. Somewhere. So tell him, thank you, and That's happy right. Father. You'll be surprised what that would do to your relationship. You can mend things together, okay? Just go on. It don't have to take a lot, just a little bit. Just say, thank you for what you're doing. And if you can, I know guys are hard on you, but if you can, tell him, I love you. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a hard on I, a lot I of heard guys. That too. <laughs> that's hard on a lot of guys. But you can do it. Just say, if you have to, nothing else, if you know how to text, text is it, but he don't take text. Well, then just, <laughs> just in the way. Get your piece of paper right on it, slip it in no, the mail. Now tell me why it's so hard. I don't know. Oh, okay. I really can't. <laughs> because I dealt with that years ago. I did. I went to God and I dealt with that. It was hard to hook. You know, the, the man is hard to get. And like, oh, I'm saying, I'm a, I know you're a man. <laughs> but it's a Jesus hooked. He loved you. Amen. <laughs> All right. Now, if you don't know him and you want to know him, oh, that's a good time. Yeah. Come to know him. Give your life to him. Give your heart to him. Just give it to him. Tell him, Father, I have sinned and I've done wrong. And I've come to you, and I'm asking you, forgive me of the sin that I've done. I acknowledge it. I admit it on unto it. I've sinned. I've done wrong. But I confess it before you, and I come to forsake it. You said that if I did that, you would have mercy on me. You would forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I do that, Father. And I believe you are the Son of God. I confess it with my mouth, and I believe it in my heart. You says now I am saved. I receive that. Thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. And I say to you, welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. You 
get your Bible and read it. Romans 10, 9 and 10. What I just told you, that's exactly what he's telling you to do. Confess it, admit it, own up to it, acknowledge it. So simple. Not by works, unless any man will go to boasting. But it's by faith, trust in God. Amen. Now concerning the offering, it's our pan over there, but we got uh, Amen. I'd like to thank you for your giving to everyone yeah, that's been giving. Yes, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Given, uh, online, on the rent, for your giving. It is not forgotten about. Okay? It's not forgotten about. Amen. Again, 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 6, read this. For this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he had purpose in his heart, so let him be of not grudgingly or unnecessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Amen. Father, we lift our seed before you, those, God, that have sown by faith, God, into the kingdom of God, kingdom purpose, Father. We thank you for them, and we ask you, God, for this seed that has been sown, and we just honor you and thank you, according to your word, for the abiding grace of God, that grace will abide in their lives, God. Not that they are buying, trying to buy salvation or to buy, but, but just being obedient and trusting you. Now, I thank you for the abounding grace. Thank you for meeting the needs, spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, there's a place called heaven. Place called Jesus. Jesus is coming. You don't want to be left here without him. Oh, no. You don't want to leave this life, this earth, without him. So come to him. Now, we would like to get 